and I'm gonna throw it back to you By now you should have somehow realized what you gotta do I don't believe that anybody feels the way I do about you now Hi guys, this is How To Play Wonderwall by Oasis, the classic acoustic guitar tune and um, this song is mainly why I refer to a lot of songs, um, a lot of chords that we learn in my beginners course as Noel Gallagher chords because they are featured uh, here. Um, it is a, a very tricky song, it's sort of pitched at the end of my beginners course so if you cannot fully replicate the strumming pattern or the chord changes as sweetly as you might like it's okay, this is, this is supposed to be at the end of the beginners course, so you can always go back to any of the tutor recommended ones um, in my uh, beginners course, li big old list of songs um, that I've made video lessons for. Pick any of those, and I've selected those because they have a strumming pattern that I would recommend that you learn, prepping you for songs such as this that are kind of coming towards the end of the beginners course. Okay, now, your chord sequence is E minor with your third and little finger um, both down in kind of the Noel Gallagher G position. And this is why I've referred to it as a Noel Gallagher. It's kind of like Noel Gallagher didn't invent these chords, but he certainly kind of popularized them. Um, kind of like Michael Jackson with the moonwalk, I guess. He didn't invent it, but you hear, hear this and you kind of think Noel Gallagher. Uh, we have got a capo at second fret um, also, which is needed to be able to replicate this and be able to play it along to the song, that is pretty crucial. Um, your E minor with your third and little finger down at third fret on the B and E string. Sounds like that. Straight away, getting that Oasis sound. And then a big G with your third and little finger down. Other than that, fairly standard fingering for this one. We got a D sus4 which is a normal D major with your little finger staying down. And essentially for the whole song, this third and little finger are gonna stay exactly where they are. So it's gonna be great for their finger strength, but also it's gonna be pretty tough. Just for me doing that for a couple of minutes, I've already got lines on my fingers. If you have lines on your fingers too, it's okay, it happens. They will toughen up and get used to it. Um, if you do it, I really recommend kind of little and often with with your practicing. It's far better to do kind of 20, 15 minutes, maybe half an hour every day uh, or as close to every day as you possibly can rather than two hours on a Sunday is what I always, always, always say. That was something I used to do, try and get all my practice in on a Sunday for, for a guitar lesson on a Monday, but um, it's, it's not the best way to do it. Try and do it, do it every night is, is definitely the best way. Um, so we have your D sus4 chord as your third chord in this song. And then finally an A sus4 with your third and little finger exactly where they were uh, before, just with kind of your, uh, your A chord. It's like your E minor, the first chord we played in the song, but with your first and second finger moved down a string, giving us this A bass note. That's how we get this signature sound of the song. If you would like to uh, look at the chord sheet for this song, it's at the top of the description below. Click that, it's a link to my website where you can have a look at the chord sheet. This song, this video, and um, all my other lesson videos, all for totally free. Um, check them out on, on there. There's a whole beginner's course set up, um, which this is kind of one of, one of the end ones with. Um, so your four chords, just to recap, E minor, to a G major, to a D, and finally A, all with this Noel Gallagher method of keeping your third and little finger down the whole time to get that signature kind of 90s sound. There's tons of 70s songs and older songs do it as well, um, but as I say, it's, it sounds kind of vintage Gallagher. Um, okay, okay. So we have two beats for each chord in the order I've shown you. So one, two, G, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, 
three, four. Which I would def definitely recommend quite a bit of time just kind of strumming through them there. If you don't want to sing the lyrics, you can kind of speak them. If you can get how everything kind of fits together here, it means we can have a lot more fun with your strumming and, and put a lot more embellishments into it because there's a strict strumming pattern to this song, but he also kind of varies. He weaves in and out of it and adds a little more uh, um, here and there. So uh, I'm going to kind of show you the variations that are, are commonly used with a strumming pattern as well. So to get used to it, join in with me from the start. Just one strum per chord. Two, two beats for each. For each chord, start from your E minor in one, two, three, four. E minor to a G, D and A, and put that in a loop. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Today was gonna be the day that they're gonna throw it back to you. By now you should have somehow realized what you gotta do. Keep that going. I don't believe that anybody feels the way I do about you now. Okay, uh, before we go any further in the song, because essentially for the rest of the song now, you can kind of follow your, your chord sheet for, for the chord symbols to it. Um, we have a C with the Noel Gallagher style, a D, and th there's not too much extra going on with the chords. It's pretty standard. All the cool stuff. It's going on with the strumming hand. So let's dive in here. Just one quick demonstration and I'll slow it down super slow and then I'll give you all your increments um, that we can start from quite basic, all the different increments that are gonna get you up to doing this strumming pattern. Okay, so this is a 16th um, grid strumming pattern rather than the eighth strumming patterns that much of the beginners course was based on. Um, so if you haven't done any of the two kind of recommended ones from a beginners course you may struggle with this one specifically the part at the end on the A. That bit's the trickiest bit at the end. Um, that's using from the 16th grid we're just hitting a lot of upstrokes in a row then which can make it very strange to do. If I just take that bit out and do that with the same strumming pattern that I'm doing with the rest of the song it becomes a lot simpler. Okay so you hear a difference on that final chord here. Keeping that one the same as the G, the D, uh, the G and the D. The E minor chord, it's just power eight. It's just all downs on your eighth strumming. One and two and. One and two and. On your G chord, this is where we start to, it starts to get a little bit more complicated. So one and two and a three and a four. One and two, down, up, down, up, down, down. Down, 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 down. So your hand keeps moving the whole time, but it is doing, those eight strums are still there, but we have a down, up, down, up in the middle, which you're just catching your upstrokes. So strumming pattern for the first bar, one and two and a three and a four. One and two and a three and a four. One and two, down, up, down, up, down, down. The result is, if you watch it, it just kind of looks the same as if I do one and two and three. One and two and a three and a four. My hand doesn't look any different when I'm adding these extra strums, guys. That's the thing to get with strumming. You put it on a grid and then you just keep your hand moving and you choose which ones you catch and which ones you miss. Sometimes we miss the ones on the beat, sometimes we miss the ones off the beat, and we have to kind of get used to the sound of it, which is why I'm doing it in these increments. So, three, four, one, and two, down, up, down, up, down, down. One more time. Three, four, down, 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 up, down, up, down, down. And the down, up, down, up section 
repeats for the next two, uh, the, well, the next bar to begin with, okay? So one and two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four would be the next increment to, to definitely get. I mean, to, to just play along to the song, um, so obviously I'm not sure of, uh, there's no way for me to know what, what level you're at when you're going for this video. You can just simply do the whole song with powered eights if you would like, which would sound like one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And if you cycle around that for long enough and play it to the record, all you have to do is add upstrokes in the right places. And when you know what it sounds like, you will be able to add those. So that's something that I kind of really, really recommend that, that you have a look at. Um, if you just want to play along to me just with power eights, so three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. One more time. And two and three and four and one and two and three and four. You can hear that the signature part of it, kind of the cool bit, if you will, uh, has been taken away from it but you're more likely to instinctively add it in a much easier way if you work on it from that point of view. But we'll zoom in in, in detail, and uh, with the extra part that I've, I've been demonstrating, it would go one and two, and a three and a four, and a one and two, and a three and a four. Okay, so let's have a go from your E minor with that strumming pattern. Two, three, four. One and two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four. One and two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four. One and two and a three and a four and a one and a two down up down up down down. One and two and a three and a four and a one and a Okay, stop you there. From um, the la that last chord, the A major, there's kind of a, a signature move which happens as a, a byproduct of when we're using these higher level strumming patterns, we cannot get from one chord to the other instantly. And we don't try to. What happens is we play basically this chord, which is nothing. It's the chord we were doing before with your first two fingers open. It's kind of almost a G chord, but it's, it's, it's no real chord. But when we play that in between two chords, it sounds absolutely fine. So at the end, that's what he does. And he makes a bit of a feature of it. What he does is he takes those first two fingers off, which are his, the fingers that change per chord, and they go essentially to the open strings. Um, that's that's where the kind of signature part of that that ending, which is much tougher, but I want to show it you guys to for you to have a go at. So we have down, down, up, down, up, and for that I'm referring to these two fingers here. As I say, we're on an A, and this is is not a chord really. You can it's kind of almost a G chord, but you know don't think of it as a chord. We're just adding some riff content to this song. So for these first two fingers, down, down, off, down, off. Down, down, off, down, off. And at the end of your song, don't worry about the strumming too much for this time. I want these two fingers to have the coordination to come off when we need them. So down, down, up, down, up is what we're going to add right at the end of this song. One and two and a three and a four and one and a two. Down, down, up, down, up. That's the signature kind of bit to get, which is easily the most toughest, toughest part of the song. Often when I teach it to, to my beginner students, we, we don't really cover this in much, much detail. We kind of move on from it and skip on to the rest of the song. But I want to cover it just in case you're at a level where you can do this. Um, so one more time. Play it uh, along a couple of times for me. I'll slow it down from your E minor. Have a go at the riff. See if you can do it. From the E minor, two, three, four. One and two and a three and a four. 
four and a one and two and three and a four, two, three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Pause there. If this is something that you're really struggling with, as I say, definitely check out any of the earlier songs in my beginner's course, which will be on an annotation somewhere on this screen. Um, any of the tutor recommended ones will have more in-depth strumming to them, which, uh, as I say, are stepping stones towards being able to do a riff like this. Um, if you're nearly there, then that's, that's all good. Just keep on it. You know, you don't have to get it instantly. Um, let's have a talk through your bridge and your chorus. So your chords, um, two beats for a C add nine and all the roads to a D we have to walk E minor. So C for two, D for two, E minor for a whole bar. And all the roads we have to walk go winding. And all the lights that light the way are blinding. Third time through, it goes C to the D. And then we have one signature little move which you need to be aware of um, on, the, on the chord sheet because it, it may kind of confuse if you've not come across it before. We got a G. We got a G with a second fret bass note or an F sharp bass note to your E minor. So you don't have to worry too much about bass notes. All we need is your first finger moving up by one string and your middle finger comes off. And this is your G slash F sharp. G, that's with the F sharp bass note, and then to your E minor. And that's over. Would like to say to you. One more time from the G, one strum of each chord. Two, three. Would like to say to you. Let's do it again. Three, four. Would like to say to you. But I don't know how is an A. But I don't know how. Which is a great opportunity. To if you're experimenting with these first two fingers coming off, he stays on A for a whole two bars. I didn't just hit it every time. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. And you're shaking up the rhythm by lifting off your fingers when you choose, really. That's, that's the, um, the subtlety that we, we have in, in this song. It's a bit of creative license, I guess. Um, and then, uh, finally, your chorus. C add 9 to E minor. G to E minor. And that happens four times. Um, but on the last time, we end it with the G, F sharp, E minor section one more time. So from the G, um, two beats for each chord throughout this chord sequence. C, E minor, G, E minor. From the C, two, three, four. Seven, maybe three, four. One, two, you're gonna be the one, the E minor. E minor, C, E minor, G, E minor, C, E minor, that's your fourth time, after the E minor, G, F sharp, E minor, G, F sharp, E minor, ends that first chorus. It doesn't end the second chorus. The second chorus just loops those, those four chords that we covered. C, E minor, G, E minor. For the rest of the song, basically. Um, and that's, that's all, there, all there is to it. Obviously, it's going to be tricky to get all the subtlety that is in this song. And the subtlety really makes it. But you've got to make sure that in your practice routine, you're not only attempting this song, you're attempting other songs that are just pitched below this song to give you the skills to be able to work on, on this song and improve and then be able to play this and show off to your friends and be really pleased because you can play Wonderwall. 
Um, but that's why I've developed this beginner's course. Please check it out. I'm trying to, I'm going to be uploading more videos that are kind of lower pitched than this to make it absolutely solid to enable you to do higher level songs such as this. Um, if you need any further help in this, leave comments below and um, let me know how, how you're getting on with it or if there's anything I've not explained clearly enough for you in this video, please let me know, it's all good. Um, if you want, even better than that, you can post a video response. Film yourself playing this song and I will give you feedback on it. I can even make another video to kind of demonstrate what, what might be going right and, and what might be going wrong with, with your, your playing when you try and do this and give you some help that way. So, um, as I say, really want to, for any of the songs on my website, if you post a video response, I will help you out and comment and let you know how you could possibly do it better. But also say if you're doing a good job and you're doing it great, I'll tell you you're doing it great. You know, I'll, I'll be totally honest with you. Um, so yeah, please subscribe if you like this video. Check out the website for the chord sheets and I'm sure you will, I will see you again.